Hi guys, Dr. Sunder here from iMedics. Uh, today's short video is on the management of vitamin B12 deficiency in line with the current NICE guidance. So when we're managing somebody with B12 deficiency, it's important that we uh, split it into those with neurological symptoms and those without. In patients who've got vitamin B12 deficiency and neurological symptoms, the current NICE guidance is that you have to get an opinion from the haematologist. But if you can't get that quickly, then you can start them on treatment. And the current treatment would be one milligram of intramuscular hydroxycobalamin injections. And these are normally given on alternate days until the patient has no further symptoms. And then we can progress on to one injection every two months. For patients who've got vitamin B12 deficiency, but no neurological symptoms or no neurological involvement, then the management depends on whether it's diet related or not diet related. So for someone who has not non-diet related vitamin B12 deficiency, they're gonna need hydroxycobalamin injections, which is one milligram intramuscularly. Uh, and these will be given uh, every, uh, three times a week for two weeks and then every two to three months for the rest of that patient's life. If a patient has diet-related vitamin B12 deficiency, then they have two options. The first one is vitamin B12 tablets, like cyanocobalamin tablets that are taken daily. And the second option is an intramuscular injection, um, which is given every six months. Now, it's interesting because some people will have a needle phobia, so they may prefer the tablets. And indeed, you know, in recent times, we have started to give vitamin B12 tablets more often than the injections. The other thing to bear in mind is if you've got a patient as a vegetarian, it's very likely that they may need the vitamin B12 injections for the rest of their lives. Whereas a patient who uh, doesn't have um, B isn't a vegetarian uh, and they're managing to correct their B12 with the injections and also dietary changes, they may be able to come off the injections and it'd just be a case of monitoring them. The blood test as you perhaps would normally anyway, and maybe an annual blood test or every so often, uh, but they can come off the injections and, and go on to just dietary changes. So as with all patients, uh, if the, the advice that you should be giving them in terms of their diet is very important because there are foods that contain a good level of vitamin B12 that can, be, that can supplement our diets nicely. Uh, and these will include things like eggs, um, milk and dairy products, meat, salmon and cod is supposed to be very good as well. Uh, foods that are fortified with v vitamin B12, so things like cereal, um, so these are the sort of the common things that we should be educating our patients about. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. That was a short video on the management of vitamin B12 deficiencies. Remember, split it up into neurological versus non-neurological. And then for the non-neurological B12 deficiency patients, you've got diet-related versus non-diet-related. Quick summary taken from the NICE guidance. Keep an eye on the NICE guidance for any updates and changes. Uh, and I hope you found this video useful. We've got a lot more videos coming up on our YouTube channel, Inspire Medics, and our Instagram and Twitter pages, Inspire underscore Medics, and our Facebook revision groups for PLAB1 and PLAB2, and the MRCGP, AKT, and CSA. I'll see you guys soon.